Okay, this is uh, Jack Jackson. We're going to look at applying probability trees to a real-world example here. This is a medical example. So this example is based on some actual events. I'll remove the names, but uh, it turns out that cystic fibrosis is a genetic disease that's inherited by a double recessive trait. So each person receives a particular gene, either good or bad, from each parent, good or bad in, in this context. And the person has disease if and only if he or she receives a bad, the bad gene from both parents. So a healthy person is a carrier for the disease and may pass on a bad gene to children if he or she receives one good gene and one bad gene from his or her parents. So they don't have the disease, but they still got that, that, that faulty gene to pass on. So here's a... And of course, if you got two good genes, not only do you not have the disease, you can't pass on a bad gene. So here's the situation that we were dealing with. A healthy man with healthy parents has a sister with cystic fibrosis. Since the man's parents produced a child with the disease, and, and since we also know that his, his parents were uh, did not have the disease, we know that both his parents are carriers. So that both of his parents have one good gene, one bad gene. So let's take that situation. Suppose that two healthy parents are carriers for the disease. Make a probability tree showing the possible relevant genetic outcomes for offspring. What's the probability that a child will have the disease? What's the probability the child will be a healthy but a carrier? Well, here's basically what you get. You can get a... a uh, a uh, bad gene from the female parent or a good gene from the female parent. You get a bad gene from the male parent, a good gene from the male parent, bad gene from the male, or a good gene from the male. And these are the genes you get from the male and female are independent and so they're each a half. So all these probabilities are just a half. So kind of like the boy-girl situation, in fact it's exactly like it because it's it's a uh, it's it's really uh, it's really getting the whether or not they get a get an X or a Y chromosome from one parent. It turns out to be one fourth of the time you'll get the bad gene from both parents. One fourth of the time you'll get a good from both parents, and then it turns out a half of the time you'll get uh, one good, one bad, and so you'll be a carrier. So it turns out in this case that the probability that the child will have the disease is one fourth. The probability of a completely healthy child that is three four well, a healthy child is just one that doesn't have both bad genes, so that's three fourths. The probability the child is a carrier is one half, and the probability that's completely free of the genes bad genes is 25 percent. So, what is the probability that the man is a carrier? Well, we know that both are known to be carriers, and we also know that that he's free of the disease. So he does not have that. Now it's a conditional probability. So we know that he's not in the part that, that uh, has two bad genes. So what's of the group that's left, three-fourths of those children uh, don't have, well, three-fourths of all of them don't have the disease. He's in that group. So two-thirds of that group are carriers. So the conditional probability of him being a carrier, given that he does not have the disease, but both parents are known carriers, is two-thirds. So GG, GB, and BG may not make up are equally likely outcomes for his genetic makeup. Each one's, uh, so two-thirds of those are carriers. Now, there's no fa history of family history of disease in the wife's family. Now, she's a Caucasian. Probability of a healthy Caucasian in the United States being a carrier was told to them to be approximately 1 20th. The couple was considering having a child. Now, given the information presented thus far, make a probability tree given the probability distribution for the relevant genetic makeup of possible children. Okay, it's a little more complicated here, but let's see what we've got. So the father could either be a carrier or free. Two-thirds is a carrier, one-third is free. The mother could be a carrier or free. In each case, 1 20th a carrier, 19 20th free. Neither one of them had the disease. The gene from the father could be bad or good. One half each if he's a carrier. 
Okay, so the father's the carrier here. So given we get here only if the father's a carrier, so one half and one half. We also get here only if the father's a carrier, so one half, one half. Down here though, if the father's free, probably the good gene is one half, so the bad's not an option here. Similarly, if we go here, if both the mother and father are carriers, we could get a bad or a good with equal probability from the mother. If the mother is a carrier again, equal chance of bad or good here. If we have uh, to get here, if the father, if the mother is free, then the gene for the mother has to be good, no matter what. Probability one there. If the father is free, we have to uh, we have to get a good gene from the father. But if the mother's a carrier, half and half, good and bad. If they're both free, then we definitely get good here. All right, so let's let's multiply these probabilities. Two thirds times one twentieth times one half times one half is one over one hundred twenty. Okay, and then uh, this one times this one times this one times that one is also one over one twenty, and so forth. And you can see that I multiply all those probabilities. All those add up to to one. Now, which ones of those are? Uh, uh, given the information we know now, this is the tree for it. So let's look at what happens. The one that we have two bad genes is there's a 100, 1 over 120 is the probability. Given the information that we know, that's the probability that, that the um, child will actually have the disease. The purple ones are the ones with one good and one bad gene. This one, this one, this one, and this one. So if you add those up, 1, 2, 3 over 120 plus 19 over 60. Anyway, that add that up. That's the probability that, uh, that we get a carrier. And the ones with two good genes would be this one, this one, this one, and this one. If you add up those, you get the probability of two good genes. So I, I did that. So the probability the child will have the disease is 1 over 120, or about 0.83%. Probability the child will be a carrier for the disease is uh, about is 41 over 120, which is 34%. Probably the child will be free of the bad gene for the disease is 13 over 20, or 65%. Okay. At the time this happened, genetic testing existed to determine if one or both parents are carriers. The probability is high that the man will test positive and be a carrier, two-thirds. Probability is low that the mother will test positive and thus be a carrier, one over 120, or one, one over 20. If either tests negative, then there's a 0% chance of the child having a disease. If they both test positive, then we now know that there's a 25% chance the child will have the disease. Now, this is this was quite a few years ago, and at the time, genetic testing was a pretty new thing. So at the time, the insurance company was saying that having a child when you knew that both parents were carriers was considered a pre-existing condition, and they would not cover medical expenses. So the question is, should they test the man or his wife, both or neither? Should they decide to have the child or not have the child based on this information? Now, some of these things aren't based just on these numbers, but these numbers should help them inform their decision. And I can tell you what they decided and how it turned out, because I know this is based on one particular specific case. Of course, it could have turned out differently, but it turned out they decided not to be not to test, and they went ahead and had a, had a child, and uh, and this particular child was was uh, free of the disease, uh, and it wasn't tested to see if they had had the uh, the gene at least at that point now they may have made another decision later on for a, for a second child I don't know but this is uh, this is what happened there so you can see the point is is that that these trees can be used to make some pretty interesting um, decisions or give you some data to go with some pretty interesting decisions so um, that's just one example there we can look at I thought was kind of interesting and uh, we worked out all these trees back when this was was happening to uh, to inform the couple and see see what they would do with it. So there will be some more probability tree exercises in the next video.